All right guys, today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorite group of tortoises, one of the best pet tortoises you can have, and that is the group of tortoises known as the Testudo tortoises and the Russian tortoises. Readily available, small size, and really friendly and smart. So let's get into it. Let's talk about these tortoises and why they are some of the best pets that you can have. So one of the things that makes these tortoises so great is their small size. Uh, a lot of people want a pet tortoise and they're really <laughs> drawn to those little baby sulcutas, those little tiny cute sulcutas. Problem is, is those readily available small sulcutas end up growing into giant tortoises. Giant tortoises that are both hard to house, hard to feed, and just end up being a pain and then end up not getting the care that they deserve or end up having to be rehomed. So instead, instead of looking at that large tortoise, Look at a smaller tortoise, look at a Russian, look at a Hermans. Uh, the group of Testudo tortoises is a great group of tortoises. They include uh, the Hermans, the Greek, the Marginated, the Egyptian, and the Russians are also semi part of that group. They used to be Testudo, now they're called like Angry and Emis or something like that. So the taxonomy of the Russians has changed a little bit, but I still include them with that group of tortoises. The care is almost identical. They're so similar. Um, I even house them together. I got a group of Russian tortoises that came with the Herman's tortoise and they'd always been kept together. So I didn't break them apart. And when I started housing them here in this pen, they do great together. And that is one of the things that I like so much about this group of tortoises is they get along in groups. Any small skirmishes are usually stomped out pretty quick and you don't have that risk of heavy injury or death that you have with those larger tortoises like Salcatas. These tortoises are also extremely adaptable and cold tolerant. Um, they can adapt to any kind of weather. Um, the Russians and the Greeks and the Hermans come from a drier environment and mine are here in the Southeast United States, which is much more humid. Uh, we get a lot of rain, we get a lot more just ambient humidity. I ended up placing this pen in a drier section of my yard uh, that's well drained and gets a lot of sun. So it's a little bit closer to where they live, but they still had to kind of adapt to where I'm from. So they're very adaptable and they can handle changes in the seasons. Uh, they're cold tolerant. I leave these outside year round and they do just fine. What I do is I provide um, some cover. I provide, um, there's a small hide box. There's also a piece of metal tin and both of those I stuff with Timothy hay and leaves and these tortoises end up actually burrowing down into and under that and it ends up insulating them through the winter. So depending on where you live, you could easily house these tortoises outside year round. Uh, for most people in the United States, unless you're up in the far north or Canada, I wouldn't recommend trying to house them outdoors year round. Um, you could probably get away with doing some kind of small heated greenhouse. But for where I live in the southeast, year round is easy. Um, if you're in Europe or Asia and you're in about the same latitude, likely you can keep these outdoors year round as well and run into almost no issues. These tortoises are very easy to feed and care for in that they don't eat these big bushels of food that larger tortoises do. Um, mine actually, do, they do graze on some of the grass that you see back here. Um, they'll graze on the grass, they'll graze on some of the weeds that are growing in the enclosure. Um, but I also do grow my own food. I grow spring mix and different grasses and uh, leafy greens and I'll go cut that and bring that over and feed them on that. I do recommend when you feed these tortoises, I do recommend a rock or a piece of slate. Uh, they are prone to overgrowth of beak, um, so they do need something kind of hard to kind of, when they feed, to kind of slowly wear down that beak over time. Otherwise, they, they are prone to getting an overgrown beak. Uh, being housed outdoors, generally you don't run into too many issues with that, but it can be something that happens. I always recommend a rock or a flat piece of slate. What I did for my setup is I did these uh, vertical posts kind of all the way around so that they're going into the ground. Uh, I originally did the horizontal board technique and they just laughed at me and just dug right under it. So these actually go into the ground six to eight inches, goes all the way around the setup and then uh, it's, it's pretty wide open. And then I also have the option that uh, perhaps later in the year or early next year, I can actually expand a little bit more this way and a little bit more the other way. Um, as I feel that I need to expand. Right now these tortoises are doing really, really well in this setup. The one thing you also want to provide is always have a source of water uh, for these guys. Even though they come from dry areas, they do need water and I know that mine consume water every single day. I'll see them out in the morning and then they'll all go over to the water dish and consume some water. So I have to provide fresh water every single day. 
So some of the things I like the most about the Testudo group of tortoises is that small size. They're also very, very friendly and very outgoing. Um, they're a little bit shy in the beginning, uh, but as they get to know you, as they know you as the big food monkey, uh, they will come running over and see you in the morning. Uh, they'll perk right up when you walk by. They're just, they're really personable. Um, and they also breed pretty readily. I know a lot of people have bred uh, Herman's tortoises, Greek tortoises, uh, and they're people that are actually starting to breed the Russian tortoises. Uh, one of the issues with Russian tortoises is, is they're readily available, but it's because they're being uh, imported from uh, Eastern Europe and Kazakhstan and nice. um, parts of Russia and throughout the range of the Russian tortoise. They're just collected and brought over here in droves. Uh, luckily, there are some people that are captive breeding them, and it is possible to get captive bred babies, which are always going to do so much better than those wild caught adults. All right, so I hope you found this short video uh, helpful. If you're looking for a great pet tortoise and uh, you don't have a lot of space, maybe you're in an apartment right now, you could still easily house one of the Testudo tortoises. Uh, if you have a house with a yard and a lot of space, I still recommend Testudo tortoises. They're going to be great. Um, they're really, it's really hard to go wrong with them. Uh, if you do live in a, a super humid climate like Florida or a country that is closer to the equator, uh, try seeing if you have an area where you can set it up that's a drier area. Uh, if it's going to be too hot and too humid, then I would recommend something like a red or a yellow foot tortoise. But overall, I would say these are some of the best tortoises. Uh, I will be doing another video on the red and yellow foot tortoises as well. So keep an eye out for that one. But thank you guys for watching this video. Leave me a comment. Tell me, do you have a Testudo tortoise? What kind of tortoise do you have? And what do you think is the best tortoise? Let me know below. Uh, and otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. Thank you guys.